Hi guys, it's Mel again. Um, I'm actually really stoked to hear someone request something about my candy background. Um, from my last few vlogs, I uh, just touched a little bit on uh, what I do, which includes uh, my seven years of kindy. Um, my resources are all tied into one, and I, I do keep everything together. But A to Z wise, I do have quite a wide range of kindy children based activities. Um, I'll probably never stop saying this in my vlogs. We are all different and um, with me I'm more of a hands-on learner but it doesn't go, it, it doesn't mean that I find something and, and not use it if it's more of a, a theory. I, I tend to feed off of what the children ask for. And in one of my training and development days a little while ago, I saw a concept that threw itself at me. I really enjoyed learning about how a child's uh, book could be useful in more ways than one. So uh, one of my favourite, favourite novel, not novels, uh, children's books, I should say, is um, the, the spot range. And it's very simple, I understand. It's uh, more for the under threes. But I tend to love the simplicity of what spot gives. And this is an actual favourite of mine because when I first found my love for spot, I was always asking if he had a sibling. And I even wrote to the author uh, about maybe writing a book about having a sibling and um, I found out that he does actually have a sister. Um, her name's... I'll find out. I think it's Sally. Sally's actually the mum, I think. Oh, there we go. It's Susie. So Susie is Spot's sister. I was, I was really, really happy to find this. This is just me. But um, on the training and development day, this lady got out a binder um, and Velcroed this to the front, which I thought was a bit weird to begin with. But when she opened it, and I'm sorry I don't have an example, I'm still trying to make mine, I will make a, a vlog about what I saw and, and once I've made it, that um, she filled the book with uh, photocopies of the, the pictures, like the actual characters. So you would see um, Spot's mum or dad photocopied and laminated or you'd see pictures of Spot or Susie or even um, some of Spot's other friends and she'd just use it as something for the children to hold throughout the story and then um, come and put it up on the whiteboard or it could be a memory game on the floor uh, just little things like that and I just I, I love the concept something that you can use at kindy or at home it, it makes the characters in a story jump out of the book and explain themselves a little bit more. Characters are really important. And I do believe in children's literature very seriously. Uh, so if you get an idea in, in your head about what kind of books or authors uh, that you want your children to get into, this is just another idea on um, how you can expand their imagination with the book. So if you've got a laminator or a photocopier, anything at all, just make copies and um, uh, laminate what you can, uh, get as much as you can, use your imagination and just spend a little bit more time explaining uh, lots of different key points of the book and you'll find that your children will um, attach themselves a little bit to those characters and the book itself will actually start modelling their interests as well. And you'll find that the, the uh, love of, of certain authors and books will become something uh, of a favourite to them over the years. I, I really hope your children do find that love in books because to me it, it's something that's very close to me. Um, something else that I do, just, just touching on, on what I do with the four-year-olds and over, they sometimes, when they come to kindy, have some speech, language or behavioural difficulties or obstacles or, you know, just those um, key milestones where they need a little bit more help. Um, 
one of the more specifics is that they might lisp a little bit, um, or they might not touch on their k, t, b, s sort of thing. So when it comes to those specific problems, there's a game that we like to call Mr. Tongue, and I, if you've heard of it, then you'll all be smiling, and you know I, I can I can see the funny side of it. It's it's quite. Uh, interactive game where you need to let go of all of your shame um, and just and, and just do it with them. I'll explain it. The story goes, um, Mr. Tongue wants to see his house one day and, he, and they stick their tongue out and they go, Mr. Tongue's house was very dirty so the tongue has a bit of a look around and they find their place, they find their lips and they tend to use their lips a little bit more um, and then Mr. Tongue realised that he needed to go and clean his house, so in goes the tongue. Mr. Tongue notices that he needs to clean his house a little bit, so he decides to get out the mop and bucket and wash the floors. And those little key interactions with the hands help as well. And then if all else fails, you can be a snake. Um, at the end, uh, if you decide to skip straight to the end, it goes, Mr. Tongue wanted to decorate his house. So he got out his nails, and he got out his hammer, and he decided to hang, out, hang up some pictures at the back of his house. So they're using the back of their throat. K -k 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 goes the hammer. And that's where they start to realise that they have the back of a throat. Most of the time young children only realise that they've got everything at the, at the front of the throat and they start with their t t t b b b m m m So once they establish the idea that they can use it, that's when in sentences it's a lot easier for them to realise they can use, they can also use their t t t b b b m m m And so the end of the story is um, Mr. Tung wants to hang up the pictures at the front of the house so it gives them idea at the front of their their mouth they have the tip of their tongue that they you they can use in several different ways and you can have a bit of a play with this it's not the full story I'll probably um, use the visuals that I have somewhere in another vlog I just wanted to quickly touch on it again I hope this helps because I know I understand it's a little bit scatterbrained but I really felt like touching on this today um, with children's uh, learning, it goes without saying, every moment of the day, they seem to have a question. They, they're they always questioning something. Why does the oven need to be turned off? Why do I need to go to bed so early when the sun's still out? Why do I need to wash my hands? I can say, um, as a support worker, that it's just as hard uh, answering some of those questions even when you're not a mother. So when you finally want to ask them a question, it's no surprise that sometimes they don't always want to answer you. We get just as upset, so do they. Um, I do a lot of questioning when it comes to their concepts. This is something, I'll, I'll go through the book again in another vlog. Um, understanding and responding to questions, it's a concept in itself your very first layering of questions you would give them, their the level of questioning, would be something like, what is that? What does it do? Where does it go? Um, you can go all the way up to level seven and eight, and that gets a little bit more difficult, like um, if we put this on something hot and this happens, what can we do about it? It depends how, it depends how further up the scale you go. For me, my simplest uh, beginnings was um, a species little box of tricks and they usually keep a cup, a spoon, a fork, a knife, a block, a teddy and a pencil. And they would just go, put the knife on the plate, put the fork in the box, put the teddy under the box, give me the pencil and then keep the knife. You know, And if you just keep uh, throwing different objects into this little equation, you'll find that they'll get really um, 
re really into it. They seem to want to know more about uh, where each thing goes, and, and once they pick up the concept, they'll want to do it to you. So, um, anyways, I understand this is a, a little bit all over the place, but um, I won't have a chance to make one in a while. So, yeah, I, I hope this has helped you a lot. If uh, you have any questions about this specific blog, just let me know. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. It was just meant to give you an idea on what I do. Anyways, I hope to speak to you again soon. I hope this has helped. Okay, bye.